An all Red Bull front row in Mexico. Daniel Ricciardo on the pole after all those problems he's had recently. And he makes a terrible start. A bit too vicious with the clutch. Gives it too many revs. Too much wheel spin. And he's drowning. That was a shame. But mm -hmm. then later on in the race, with a strong second place in the bag... He pulls up with what is originally described as an hydraulics failure, but mm -hmm. we now know was a clutch thrust bearing failure. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, not the first time we've spoken about this. No. And obviously, potentially not the first time it's happened to Red Bull this year. There have been you know, problems throughout the weekend uh, in Mexico and through the season. Mm. The, clutch, well, the, the clutch system, shall we call well, it? Well, I think has, Max had a problem, similar problem on Friday. On in Friday, yes. yes. Yeah. So mm. there, you know, and we've seen this historically over recent races and over the past couple of seasons. That you know, they say the clutch system on the Red Bull seems to be a bit of a weak point in terms of reliability, you know, in addition to the, the other issues that they have with reliability. So what you have um, is to explain, obviously the clutch is exactly the same as in a road car, it disconnects right. the engine from the gearbox. Formula One cars, it tends to only be used, you know, when the car is at a standstill at the race start, in and out of pit stops. It doesn't get used quite so much through uh, gear shift because of the way that the shift mechanism right. works. But the clutch and the mechanism is down to the team. It's not an engine manufacturer thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. So the clutch itself, well, this uh, sits on the tail of the crank. So it's attached to the back of the engine rather mm -hmm. than it being deep inside the, the gearbox and the gear case. Yeah. And this gets operated and gets pushed in and out of uh, connection by the clutch control system. So this is effectively your uh, slave cylinder that you would have in your car. And key amongst this is the bearing in the middle which slides in and out to actually move the clutch in and out of engagement. So not only is this spinning at the 12,000 RPM plus of the engine, it's got all of that torque going through it, and it has significant... So a serious bit of kit then. This is, yeah, this is, this is a, a very expensive bearing. I wouldn't right. like to think how much if I had to replace that on this one. Materials, the to... bearing... SKF make most of the bearings, I guess. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. SKF for one, and yeah, the, the, mm. the typical bearing suppliers yeah. for Formula One with this stuff. You do get ceramic roller bearings. I don't know specifically for the, the clutch. Obviously, Teams are so secretive about this all stuff, the stuff, aren't they? You know, mm -hmm. the, the wheel bearings, typically ceramic roller bearings, and they cost right. thousands of pounds each and only last a couple of races. So I would imagine the clutch bearing, which is one of these free parts, you can change mm. aspects of the clutch control system separate to the gearbox and separate to the, you know, the number of engines you've got, which again, yeah. this is why this is one of the team things. So what you have is hydraulic control of the slave uh, cylinder, with the thrust bearing in the middle, you can see the, the movement sensors here to detect mm. where the clutch is on its travel. It's a key part of you know, letting the clutch paddles out at the race start. If that fails, then you have problems. You then lose control of the clutch, you lose control of the clamp in. Obviously, it's centering everything as well. Smoke, sparks, all coming out the back of the uh, the car, as we saw, sadly, for, for Danny yeah. Rick uh, in the race. Hydraulics go, everything's gone. Um, so, yeah, so you end up with, you know, with a big failure deep down inside the car and, uh, you know, that will need to be all taken apart, all completely replaced. Well, I was going to be the next extras. question. What would cause the clutch thrust bearing? I mean, what, do you, what happened at the start wouldn't have any bearing on that, probably. Excuse the pun on the <laughs> bearing there. Um, it's hard to say. We've seen mm. in the past, I remember there was um, mm. one of the first laps, Max spun, gave it too much, um, spin in the rear wheels, rejoining the track, mm. bust the thrust bearing then. Right. Um, mm. So I don't want to say the start was the cause of this because you know it's it, we're not in a position to say so. But certainly any abuse of the clutch will start to affect this heat, right. vibration. All of these things will affect the bearings. But then you've also got how the team control the uh, clutch during uh, gear shifts. You know at the start, yeah. you know, through the pit stops as well. So all of this is a factor. And then you've got all the other things. You've got potentially a material problem, yes. life, whatever, not lifing, but certainly quality control material, quality control. which we've seen even at Mercedes, and I guess lubricants. Lubricants, Great grease assembly. Yeah. And the other thing, with this down at the bottom of the engine, tucked mm. deep down inside the gear case, cooling this, particularly it's somewhere with the thin air that you have at Mexico becomes an issue. Teams mm. actually ducked, you know, have special ducts trying to cool the clutch mm. to get it you know, down to the right working temperature. And, you know, again... That Although, is... all credit, we, in another video, we're talking about how good the Renault engine was in Mexico. All credit to Red Bull that they didn't have to cover it with lots of ducts and open the car up too much. They're obviously, the no. cooling was very efficient yeah, this in is... Mexico relative to Ferrari and Mercedes, actually. Again, another one of the yeah. things that Red Bull and Renault are very good at. Yeah. The rejection on the Renault has come yeah. down massively since that first season of the new regulations. Red Bull are able to package the side pods down to such a small size, it really is massively impressive. 
So again, you know, just shows that they have a different way of going about their business. They're not after, they don't go after the peak horsepower figures that perhaps Mercedes mm. and Ferrari are better known for. Mm. You know, there is a level of efficiency there that gets them. The and I can't help feeling as we go into the winter that, uh, particularly with Red Bull's management of the Honda engine program, which is what we've always said McLaren have lacked. A McL mm. McLaren management of Honda has been pretty poor, obviously. But with Red Bull there, I can't help feeling that all these nice things to do with thermal efficiency of the car, the packaging, are all going to really fire up Honda because that's the sort of stuff they love as well. And you can see that whole marriage really coming together next year. I can anyway. I think it's going to be very successful. No, well, probably. relatively successful for year one of the partnership. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, something that they'll mature through. But mm. already you've seen the change in Honda this year has, has been significant mm. under Toro Rosso's control. And obviously Toro Rosso... Part of Rebel part of technology, it, yeah. Rebel Racing, no doubt have had you know their fingers in this all the way through. I don't think there's any question that you know Rebel were going with Honda this year uh, for next year. Then, you know, as you yeah. say, when they start to manage all of this, you can see that that is a program that will really accelerate, and you actually get you know the power, the efficiency, the reliability to catch up Ferrari and Mercedes on their power units. And I think yeah. you know, it's just let's just have a look at the clutch again, Scubs, before we sign off on this one. This is an AP clutch, I guess. Uh, yeah, this is a very AP old. AP Automotive Products, mm -hmm. great British company, um, do most of the teams. But in, in reality, they actually don't do Red Bull, though. That's a, a German no. Sachs uh, ZF, ZF Sachs, as yeah. I understand, yeah. supply the uh, clutch for Red Bull, which yeah. is unique in the pit lane. Yeah. You know, they, suppliers come and go um, over the years. And I, when I was talking about this on social media, some people were saying, well, you know, they're obviously trying to get a lighter clutch. That's caused the problem. This isn't a clutch failure that we saw at the weekend. Mm. Um, and it would be very clear that it's not. Clutch is actually a very, very reliable. I don't actually remember in recent times an AP clutch failing at all. I yeah. think their the record is amazing. I mean, one of these hidden companies in Formula One, but they do an yeah. amazing job. They really do. So you know, Red Bull changing supply. We'll probably mm. just look into some different clamping um, performance, maybe to improve their starts changing things like that it's not all about weight it's not all about money so there's there's reasons where they would have changed this in order yeah. to get an advantage over their competitors and you know i think it's been proven that the failure wasn't down to the clutch or its manufacturing